Okay, here is kind of an overall idea flowchart for, for nomenclature. Some of you may find this helpful, some of you may find it confusing. If it's confusing, ignore it. If it helps you, use it. So we've got ionic compounds, we've got molecular compounds, we have acids. We recognize ionic compounds because they have a metal and a non-metal. What's the one exception to that little rule? Uh, if it starts with NH4, NH4 is the ammonium ion. If it starts with NH4, it's also an ionic compound, even though it doesn't have a metal in it. Then we have molecular compounds. These are only nonmetals. And then we have acids. Many of the acids could also be named as a molecular compound, um, but we're going to name them as an acid in this class. And we recognize them because they start with H. So the acids, we were just talking about those. I'll follow this flow chart down here. There's the binary acids that have two elements, and then there's the oxy acids that have oxygen. From the oxy acids, you look at the name of the oxy anion. If it's it, you change the name to us acid. And if it's ic, eight, sorry, eight, you change it to ic acid. The binaries, that's where we use the prefix hydro. We change the, the name of the nonmetal in there to ic and add the word acid. So from the names, you can recognize acids because they actually have acid in their name. So it's really easy to tell which ones are acids. The molecular compounds, um, most students don't have too much trouble with those. We use the Greek prefixes for the numbers and then the element names. We just change the ending of the second, second element to ide. So the example here, P2O5, the prefix for two is di. And that first element is phosphorus. So diphosphorus pentoxide. So five is penta, oxygen becomes oxide. And there we dropped the A on the penta. Then we have the ionic compounds. Um, and your book makes this big deal about more than one type of ion or one type of ion. Really, what you need to remember is look at the metal. Is it in group 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc, or silver? Then you do not need a Roman numeral. If it's not, you need a Roman numeral to indicate the charge. The name follows this pattern where you have the name of the cation. If it's not in groups 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc, or silver, you put the Roman numeral here to indicate the charge on the ion. And then you take the anion name at the end. Okay, so that's sort of a summary of nomenclature. What, uh, what group do you say? That, uh, Groups 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc, and silver. So this uh, skill builder exercise is an example of how you might uh, use that flow chart to name something. So what they're doing here is they're asking us to name these compounds. So CO, let's go back and look at the flow chart. Well, look here, um, metal and nonmetal. No, CO only has nonmetals in it. So that's going to be one of these molecular compounds. And it's not going to fit into the acid because it doesn't have H on it. So it's a molecular compound. So then we go down here, and the prefix, we usually drop the mono prefix on the first element. So CO would just be carbon, right? And then we have a prefix, and then the base of the second element was oxygen, so it becomes oxide, right? So we end up with carbon monoxide. Um, calcium, I, I have to stop myself from saying the names, CaF2, okay? So when we look at the flow chart, we're going to look and see that this is ionic because it has a metal in it, right? So then we're going to name the metal and everything else as the ion. We find calcium on the periodic table. It's in group 2A, doesn't need a Roman numeral. So its name is calcium. And the rest of this, cover up the calcium, the rest of it is just fluorine. And so we change the ending of its name to fluoride, and we end up with calcium fluoride. 
Let's do one more that's an acid. Let's do HF here. So this one, um, it does have two nonmetals, okay? So it could be named as a molecular compound. But in this class, we're always going to name those things that start with H as an acid, okay? Just to make it a little simpler. So we're going to name this as an acid. We cover up the H and we look at what else there is. There's just fluorine. There's no oxygen. So when there's no oxygen, then it's hydro something. Hydrofluoric acid. Hydrofluoric acid. Any questions?